Hi everyone, welcome. What you see out here on my bench are my red wiggler worms that I affectionately refer to as my original red wigglers. And that's because these worms I can definitely, in documented fashion, <laughs> track back to my original first batch of worms that I ever had. So, it's only been nine days since we checked in on these little guys, but sometimes you come in and feed sooner than expected, and that's because you just find yourself with a pile of food that you need to do away with and you've got nowhere to store it and that's kind of the situation we're in today so that's our main motivation for coming in after only nine days to feed these little guys and if I had to guess the cucumber peels that we gave them nine days ago are probably long gone anyway so coming in now is probably a timely check-in before we get started really quick just a couple bits of information about these systems they're now 91 days of age so roughly three months of age, fed eight times so far, so feeding number nine going in today. And when we last left these systems, they didn't look quite like this because we had removed plastic coverings at the beginning of the check-in and we decided that things were a little more damp in here than we wanted them to be. So my homework at the end of the last video was to come up with some replacement top coverings of a porous nature. So the plastic coverings got retired, in their place came in these paper coverings. And because the paper coverings do allow for a good bit of airflow, the, the top dressing of leaves that we applied last time have remained, remained somewhat dry and for that reason have been a little bit um, underachieving in terms of their breakdown. I just spotted right there, I see a flying insect. So you know what? I've got my BTI solution, this mosquito dunk solution. I think even now before we get started and perhaps at the end if I don't forget, giving the system a quick application of the mosquito dunks will hopefully rid us of any outbreak potential here. So I'm definitely curious to see how the cucumber peels did and it does seem to me like we're going to have to create a pretty good size opening to fit all this yummy food into. I'm just looking at my supply over here of prepared bedding. It's certainly hmm, not much. I guess we'll do the best we can with what we have here and we'll try our best to get things covered up. Perhaps the other thing we could do is we can maybe set this uh, leafy matter aside and also use that as some of the bedding to accompany the food that we're placing in here today because it is a good amount of food and I like the idea of applying a good bit of bedding to accompany the food so why don't we shove that stuff aside so that it doesn't get blended in as we start exploring and then we'll bring that back into play when we're ready to drop in today's feeding so I think I mentioned earlier the reason we went with paper-based coverings last time was because of what appeared to be excess moisture in the system and we thought that perhaps by replacing the plastic coverings with paper-based coverings we might begin seeing a little bit of drying here. So the first thing my fingers felt as we got into the system over here in bin number one was a pumpkin stem with a big fat worm crawling on it and what appears to be a little bit of leftover food from possibly the last feeding. I see some green and I also see some stuff that looks like it might be some kind of a bread. You know I didn't really pay a lot of attention to the video from last time. I did sort of just breeze through it quickly. So I'm a little bit limited on time. I really wanted to see if I can sort of just get in and out here with these little guys with my main objective being the depletion of this lovely assortment of stuff that I've got for these little guys and you know perhaps nine days was just not enough for them to work their way through that fairly generous portion that they got last time I kinda figured that cucumber peels were right up there amongst their favorites and that the stuff wouldn't last and that we'd be coming back in here today to find pretty much a emptied out feeding zone but it doesn't seem to be 
the case. It does seem like they've got a little bit of leftover material here. So, uh, so that's that, you know, I'm not going to worry about it. Other weird things we see here, here I got the chopped up seed from a mango. So it looks like this side of the seed was hacked off with a saw as well as this side, or maybe I just used a knife or something, but it's so funny how the worms love crawling inside of things like this. To nestle up inside of a nice constrained space and to hang out with their buddies. Almost like when you're a kid you like hanging out in a fort. Perhaps just because it's a, like a little secret place where you can hide from your parents. <laughs> uh, I seriously doubt that the worms have those sorts of things running through their minds. If they even have minds. Alright, that was um interesting. I wasn't really expecting to see leftovers of the last feeding, but that's fine. We definitely need to make space for today's portion, so I'm going to be opening up a nice big pit over here on bin number two as well. And it is fair to assume that we're going to see very similar stuff to what we saw in bin number one as we excavate. Leftover bits of the last feeding, the pumpkin um, stem that we just encountered. I wouldn't be surprised if we were to also bump into a, uh, a chopped up mango seed, which is exactly what I just ran into here. Except on this one, the other end of it is open, so I can't jam my finger through it to evict the inhabitants. So, lucky them. <laughs> it almost does seem to me like fewer leftovers remain here in uh, bin number two. Oh, here's another piece of chopped up mango seed, possibly the other half of that one. And there's other stuff here too. Oh, here we have one that was actually had both ends of it knocked off. <laughs> All right, we're having a little bit too much fun here. Like I said, I'm a little bit pressed on time, so I'm just going to proceed to the heart of the matter here, which is the application of today's yummy meal. So perhaps we'll leave the uh, the collection of leaves that we set aside for last and we'll just utilize what we have here as far as foundational bedding. We'll just, I think at this point, tap out what I've got remaining of my prepared bedding concoction. Luckily I just spent some time yesterday with my shredder preparing a whole bunch of freshly shredded paper and cardboard so I've got the stuff needed to replenish my supply. So that's going to be my homework for today. And somehow I always feel like I have this tendency to forget things such as in this case the restoration of some of the old things we encountered along the way. So let's get them in there too as well as some of these leftovers I'm seeing. Many more of them here in bin number one than what we found in bin number two. So we'll just get it back into the feeding zone so they can continue on with that stuff. And last but not least, we can come in with the nice generous portion of what they're getting today. And then I think at the end we'll simply cover up with the, the leafy matter. So now I, I did try to cut everything in half that I've got for them here. Half of a lime goes into each system half of a jalapeno pepper, as well as a bunch of this stuff. I, I don't even know. This is obviously when I don't know what it is that I'm feeding the worms, it's something that was donated. So um, I don't always know the names of the things that the worms are being fed. But I think, in, and that's the other thing, sometimes I know the name in Hungarian, but I don't know the name in English. And I think it's Anij is what it's referred to in Hungarian, but what it's called in English, I don't know. Maybe it's the same. I don't know. So let's see, nice juicy cucumber going into both. I definitely worried about cutting that in half prematurely and then having it spew its juices all over the place into this little transport container. It seemed like the safer bet just to leave that thing whole and then divide it up into two halves for the bins down here. And that to me looks like a nice generous feeding that I think the wormies are going to definitely appreciate. Well, 
I don't know about definitely appreciate, but hopefully appreciate. <laughs> and then uh, I've got a little bit of my grit left over here. Yet another stuff that I've got to prepare more of. I've got a whole pile of eggshell. It's really just a matter of getting the machine out and grinding the stuff down so that it uh, it can be the proper size to be used as worm bin grit. And then, as we mentioned earlier, coming in with this really nice seasoned leafy matter that had been the top dressing applied at the end of the last visit. So, I like what I'm seeing here. I wish the worms had done away with what they got last time, but then again, got to keep in mind, I am coming back here a little bit sooner than I normally would. So to find something that's a little bit out of place like that in terms of perhaps more leftovers than I'm used to seeing, I just got to factor in the fact that, um, factor in the fact, factor in the fact that we are just coming back in here a little bit earlier than we probably would have in many other cases, perhaps if we just waited another couple days, then all that cucumber would have been long gone and they would have been sitting here with nothing to eat. Well, that wouldn't be true either. <laughs> they have plenty to eat. There's residual bedding in here. There's probably leftover foods from other past feedings. And man, there is definitely still a lot of moisture in here. Eh, only nine days after swapping out the plastic coverings with paper, I believe that that's quite normal as well, but we're also now giving the systems a chance to breathe and gradually lose some of their moisture content to the air. But that's sort of a slow process, because here where I live in central New Jersey, it is a pretty humid place to be in the summertime. And as most of you know, when the air is humid, in other words, saturated with a lot of moisture, there's a uh, far reduced tendency for things to be able to dry when the air just doesn't have as much capacity to hold extra moisture. So the, uh, the drying process is just a little bit stifled now in the summertime here. But you know, at 30, no, at 91 days of age, these systems have a long, long way to go, I believe, before we would want to start seeing the material in these systems become a lot more flowing and crumbly in preparation for harvest. So I believe keeping things a little bit more on the damp side is actually beneficial for having a, a happy and healthy system, as well as a productive system in which the worms can really do their work efficiently um, without dry materials hampering their progress. So, things are looking really nice here. Back on can come the coverings. No coffee fed today, so no feedings on indicators, but I think we'll have no problem locating where we last fed. My typical approach is just to feed down the middle unless I'm doing some sort of a special feeding approach, and I think based on that we should be able to come back in here next time and find where we last fed no sweat. So that's it for the video, everyone. Hopefully you enjoyed it. If you did, as always, please don't forget to leave me a quick thumbs up before you go. That's always really appreciated. And if you haven't done so already, please also consider subscribing to the channel. That's very much appreciated as well. All right, everyone, have a great day. Thanks for watching. Bye now.